Today, Today we are going to show you how to bring your voice kit to life. Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Welcome to part two of our AIY Projects Voice Kit How To. In this video, we're going to show you how to boot up your assembled cardboard device and set up the Google Assistant SDK. By the end of the video, you'll be able to run a few demos showing off the Assistant's voice recognition capabilities. If you've come here looking for a specific section, you can skip ahead by following one of the bookmarks listed in the description. Otherwise, go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm a lot of things. Ugh, engine, not you. Radio, trivia host, and friend. More simply, I'm your Google Assistant. First things first, I need a hero. I mean an image. An image for our SD card that's gonna allow us to boot up our Raspberry Pi and get our device up and running. To find this image, you are going to head to AIY Project's Voice Kit website. When you get there, scroll down to the Assembly Guide section and you're gonna click the link that says Voice Kit SD Image. That is going to download the image. And while that's downloading, let's talk about your card writing utility. You need a program that's going to allow you to take your image and write it to your SD card. The website here recommends Etcher, so that's what we're going to use. Click on the link when you're ready or enter it into your preferred browser. And when you get to the website, click on the drop down list and select your OS to download the appropriate installer. Once you get everything downloaded, go ahead and open up Etcher. Click on the select image button and find the image file we downloaded a moment ago. As you can see, this image was released on September 11th, and I want to note that this new image is a departure from the prior one that was compatible with the Magpie Magazine issue 57 version of the kit. Next, you're going to select the drive that you want to write the image to, and you can see that it automatically selected our drive, but if you have multiple drives plugged in, you want to make sure that the right one is selected. Once you do that, go ahead and hit continue, and then we're going to hit the flash button. Now this process is going to take some time, but through the magic of editing, we can whisk ourselves merrily along. If you're building your voice kit with the video, however, now's a good time to hit the pause button and grab a cup of coffee, perhaps even a Danish if you're feeling dangerous. Once the image has been written and validated and you finish that Danish, the card will be ejected and you are ready to move on. Next, we're going to plug and power our device. At this point, you'll need a USB keyboard and mouse, an HDMI cable and monitor, and a power supply for your Raspberry Pi. Begin by plugging in your keyboard and mouse into the USB ports. Then connect your HDMI monitor to the device through the HDMI port. Grab your micro SD card with the voice kit image and insert that into the slot on the underside of the Pi. As you can probably tell, the card's a little tricky to remove, so it's recommended you either have a pair of small needle nose pliers or you can attach a small piece of tape to the card before insertion. Finally, grab your power supply and plug that in. The device should automatically begin to boot up, and after it quickly runs through its initial setup, should load to the desktop where you'll be greeted by the AOI Project's logo. If the device does not power on or does not boot to the desktop scene here, check the troubleshooting guide in the appendix of the AOI Project's guide. Now, with our device, there is no power button, so for the time being, if you wish to shut down or restart the device, click on the Raspberry Pi symbol in the top left corner, and from the drop-down list, select Shutdown. It goes without saying, but remember to shut down your device anytime before you go to unplug it. Once you're on the Raspberry Pi desktop and you are ready to move forward, click on the networking icon in the upper right corner. You're going to choose your Wi-Fi network and connect to it. Once you've done that, you're going to click on the check Wi-Fi icon on the desktop there. And when you do that, it's going to confirm that you are in fact connected. Hit enter to close that. And next we are going to click on the check audio icon. And that is going to run you through a prompt to check the microphone and the speaker. When you first click on it, you are going to be played a sound. Front, center. If you hear that sound, you will type Y for yes and hit enter. And then you'll be asked to press enter and say something for the microphone to pick up and play back to you. Help, I'm trapped in a box. Help, I'm trapped in a box. If it plays back nice and clear, you're gonna type Y and enter again, and it will tell you that the audio seems to be working and enter to close. With everything running on the hardware side, it's time to set up our Google Assistant. Open up the Chromium browser, that's gonna be the blue globe icon in the top left corner, and enter the URL to access your cloud console. Log in with your Google ID and password, and if you don't have a Google account, you're going to need to create one at this point in time. Once you've logged in, you'll see the Cloud Platform page. Click on the Select a Project button located at the top, which will open a window. Here you can select a project you've already created, but since we need to bake one up from scratch, go ahead and click the plus button to create our project. You'll be asked to give it a name. For the sake of simplicity, we're going with AIY Kit, but you can call it whatever you like. Just don't call it a comeback. And hit the Create button when you're finished. 
When you return to the page, you should now see your project name listed at the top and the dashboard displayed. If you don't, you'll need to click the Select a Project button again and select the newly created project and hit Open. Next, you want to open the Platforms main menu by clicking on the three-line icon in the top left corner. And from there, we want the dashboard under the APIs and Services section. Once there, we want to locate the button to enable APIs and services, and upon clicking that, you're going to see a variety of APIs to choose from. Using the search bar, we'll pick out the Google Assistant API, and on the About page that follows, we want to find and click the Enable button. Now we need to create an open authorization client, and to do that, we're going to go to the Credentials page located underneath APIs and Services. Once there, we're going to click the Create Credentials button. It's going to give us a few options. The one we want is OAuth Client ID. Go ahead and give that a click. If this is your first time creating Client ID, you're going to have to configure your consent screen, and that's what we're going to do. Click the button to continue, and from here you just need to fill out the product name. There's other prompts you can fill out if you want. We are just going to name ours AIY Kit and hit Save. Once you return to the Create Client ID page, under Application Type, we're going to select Other, and then we're going to rename it to something that we're going to remember, and that's going to be AI Way Kit 1. Again, you can name it whatever you want. Hit Create, and then that is going to give us our Client ID and our Client Secret. Click OK to close that window. And with all of that done, we now need to download our JavaScript object notation file, otherwise known as a .json. So let's go ahead and do that. Interesting fun fact, Jason actually derived his name from Jason Alexander of Seinfeld and Dunstan Checks End fame. No, 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 that's that's not true. I just wanted to make a Dunstan Checks End reference. Once that's finished downloading, you want to find the folder that file is in. You can get to it either going through the Chromium browser as seen here, or you can just follow the file path listed below. Either way, once you've found it, you'll note that it has quite a lengthy name, but that's okay. We're going to rename it. So right click rename and we're going to call it assistant.json. Once we've done that, it is now ready to be moved. There's a couple of ways you can do this. We are going to keep it simple. So right click cut and then we're going to move over to the home slash pi folder and we are going to right click paste our JSON file there. All right, we are just a step or two away from talking to a cardboard box like a sane human being. Let's go to our Google Accounts Activity Controls, and when we get to the page, there are a few things we want to make sure are turned on. The first is our web and app activity. Make sure that that is toggled on, and also make sure that the checkbox uh, saying include Chrome browsing history and activity is also on. Next is location history. With the new kit and image, it's no longer suggested that you turn this on, but for the sake of it, we are going to do so. Again, you don't need to, but we're going to. Next up is device information. You want to make sure that that is turned on. And lastly, voice and audio activity, you want to make sure that is turned on as well. And once you've done all that, you can minimize or close your browser, and that's because... Oh, it's demo time. Now to run our demo, we're going to open the Start Dev Terminal located on the desktop. When you open that, the prompt is going to allow you to enter a variety of commands. But we're going to take note of the hint listed here, and enter that suggested prompt letter for letter. Once you've done that, press the Enter key, and from there your Chromium browser will automatically open and direct you to your Google account. Select your account, and on the following screen we're going to allow the AI Kit permission to use our Google Assistant. With that completed, we can close the window and return to the dev terminal, where we see that the demo has started and we can begin asking our device questions. So to begin interacting with the device, we are going to say OK Google, and then follow that with whatever we want to ask or state. So you can ask it simple questions such as, okay, Google, what is your name? Google Assistant's the name. Helping you is my game. Or you can ask it important questions. Okay, Google, what is the meaning of life? It's somewhere between 41 and 43. So the other demo you can run with the Google Assistant API allows you to utilize the button instead of your voice as the trigger for the device. To run that demo, we're going to go back to our dev terminal. And when you open that, we're going to type in a different command than the last one. And you can see that displayed here on the screen. After you press enter, you'll press the button and ask a question, and the device will give you its answer back. So let's give that a shot. What's 2 plus 2? The answer is 4. What's the weather like? Right now in Columbus, it's 64 and sunny. Today, it'll be mostly sunny with a forecasted high of 78 and a low of 48. 
that is it for part two. At this point, you have the freedom to tailor your experience. You can easily continue to play around and interact with the assistant SDK as we did here with the demos provided, or if you're looking to do more, you can get involved with the PyMaker community and begin diving into the source code to transform the device to suit your needs. In part three, we're going to show you how to set up another API, that being the Google Cloud Speech API, and run a new demo showcasing its capability to handle voice commands. The Cloud Speech API adds a series of new features and capabilities, so if you're the tinkering type, you may want to check that out and give it a spin. With all that said, we'd love to hear what you've done with your kit in the Google Assistant, so let us know in the comments below. And uh, join us next time, won't you? Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <sighs> okay, Google, tell me a bedtime story. Once there was a lonely Google Assistant that wondered and wondered why nobody would talk to him. Then a magic